Welcome, everybody. We want to welcome our online people that are just joining in on Facebook Live. This is the Master's House. I am Pastor Jim. My wife's here, Katie. She's over here working on what you're seeing on your screen right now. So when you see changes, she's over here doing all that. But we want to welcome everybody here that's live in person and uh, all those that are online or in the future, if you're watching this at a future date. Uh, listen carefully because we're going to be praying and believing God for you. Amen? Amen. And so... I want to say that our service starts at 11 o'clock but we don't for worship but we don't broadcast worship at this point maybe one day we will but then we take a little transition and we go online and everybody's included so if you would like to join us in worship you need to come to our address right here at 8659 staples mill road in henrico virginia right near Parham and staples mill a couple miles north of the city of richmond amen We'd love to have you here, and if you can, if you live so far away, you can only be online. Like we've got several people from Kenya that watch, and Farmville, uh, and things like that. So we want to welcome all of you down in, in uh, South Carolina, yep. and uh, oh, and Las Vegas. Las Vegas, yes, Don't Las forget. Vegas. So we want to welcome all our friends out there. And uh, but at any rate, we'd love to have you here if you could join us sometime and be with us for our worship. Amen. Amen. But we have. Um, some special guests today, bless God forevermore. Uh, and I'm going to talk about you a little bit. I got this off your website, so I'm going to tell, every, tell them everybody who you are. In case they don't know you, This it's Bill and Fran Grogan, and I'm going to have you come up in a minute. But the Witness 2 is their ministry, Witness in the number 2. <laughs> Let me read this. Since the founding of Witness 2 in 2001, the Grogans have traveled to 13 nations, nations spanning the USA, Africa, Europe, India, and Central America. As a matter of fact, you're going next month to Malawi, Africa, uh, aren't you? End of this month. The end of this month. Ten days. Ten days you're leaving from Malawi. Mm -hmm. So think about that because we're, we're, we, we have the opportunity to sow into yeah. Malawi yeah. right now in a little bit. A little bit. At the end of the service, we'll do that. But um, they have revival-style meetings with salvations. Physical healing and deliverance are the backbone of the ministry. In addition, Witness 2 conducts pastors and leadership conferences, open-air meetings, and street evangelism. Mm -hmm. There's nothing these two can't do. <laughs> Winning the lost and empowering disciples is the passion of the Grogans. No nation, uh, town, church, or denomination is excluded. Somebody say, thank God. Thank God. None is too small nor too far to be reached. The burden to carry the gospel to every nation and every tribe is an ever-present mandate from the Lord. Mm. Hallelujah. Uh, the Grogans have over 20 years' experience in church administration, outreach ministries, and health ministry. Fran dramatically quit her career to end, attend Bible school and uh, fulfill a call to the ministry. Uh, she's a dynamic, yep, and prophetic teacher mm -hmm, with a strong healing anointing. Somebody say, uh-huh. Uh -huh. And Bill had a supernatural deliverance from drugs and alcohol. Thank you, Jesus, for that. Amen. Uh, he has been involved in ministry on various levels for over 30 years, testifying of the power of God. Salvations, Holy Spirit, baptism, and healings follow wherever the Grogans minister. And then, on top of all that and more, we've known each other since before they got married. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been married? 13. 36 years. 36 years. I don't know what happened to you, but I haven't aged at all. <laughs> <laughs> I don't plan on aging, but we've known each other a long, long time. And we come from, our roots are really from an amazing place. Uh, many people have come out of there and just done uh, you know, triumph, triumphant things for the Lord. But I thank God for the two of you, and it's, it's great to see so many people from our days back then that are on fire for God, never fell back, pushing forward, no matter what. Whatever they face, we overcome yes. Yes. in Jesus' name. Jesus. And that's what I call, are you ready for this? The word of faith. Amen. Yeah. I am a word of faith person. I love the word of faith. Yeah. Can't get saved without the word of faith. Amen. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. I'm so thankful for that foundation. And we're yes. spirit-filled. Bless God forevermore spirit-filled. Yes. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And then, then we're a family integrated church, which we'll tell you more about that later. But I just want to thank God for the two of you. And uh, had to have these friends, and now uh, 30, uh, over well, 40 years of ministry. I don't know, you know, just, just nothing can stop us. But come on up and say hello to the people. And uh, I'm just going to hand it over to you all. And uh, so the mic is yours. Here, I'll give you a hug. <laughs> Amen. 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 Good to see you. There you go. 
Amen. Well, it's good to be here. Glad that you're here today. You decided to come to church. You didn't stay home to do something else. Yeah. You're in the right place at the right time to receive what God has destined for you to receive today. Amen. Yes. We just want to thank Pastor Jim and Katie for inviting us back. It's good to see old friends yeah. go way back. Yeah, way, uh, way back. Go way, way, way back. We won't say how far back, but it's far back. Yeah. Exactly. Today we're here to bring the Word of God and the power of God to you. And today you're going to receive whatever you've come to get. It doesn't matter what it is. But it's right. healing in your body, Preach whether it's a marriage problem or fine, it doesn't make a difference what it is because today Jesus is here, the Holy Spirit is here to touch you. So you need to just expect to receive it now. You don't have to wait yeah. for a special meeting at another time. Today is your day to receive it now. Faith is now, right now. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And like Jim alluded to, we're going to Africa. It's been about four years since we've been because of the COVID restrictions, but now it's the door is wide open again, Yay. finally. So yeah, we're yeah. we're just thrilled and excited to be able yeah. to go back to that nation. We've been there many, many times since about 2001 when we first mm -hmm. started going. So we've mm -hmm. made some very strong relationships with these two different bishops that have taken us all over that nation, all these branch churches. We've done these crusades and these villages. Some of them have never had anybody ever come to the village. And so when we go there, it's um, we're the biggest thing in town because nothing else is going on. <laughs> But we're there, God is there, and people always get saved. The miracles are just just mind-blowing. Just, just stand on a flatbed truck and pray, Yeah. and we just watch them start getting healed. We don't lay hands on anybody, because we don't need to. Jesus is doing it all. Hallelujah. There you go. It's just awesome. Yeah. Just awesome. So thank you for sowing. If you do, expect God to bless you and to prosper you. So today, receive a fresh word from my wife, Reverend French. She's got something she just got from the Holy Ghost, just... A day or two ago. Yay. For you. Oh, How boy. Hey, Fresh off the press. No, nothing left over. I'm glad nothing I off came. the internet. It's, it's brand new from heaven. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> well, good morning, and it's so good to be here with everyone. I'm uh, asking you to join me by opening your Bible uh, to John chapter 11. Yay. Praise the Lord. I'm really glad that you're all here. Because truthfully, you're the reason that I am here. Amen. You're the reason. You're the reason. Amen. John chapter 11, um, find verse 20. And uh, we're going to read a, a long portion of this chapter. Uh, because I, what I want to talk about is the faith of Martha and Mary um, and their brother Lazarus. Mm. And this is a familiar passage to so many of us. And so I'm going to begin um, reading in verse number 20. Um, and in verse 20 it says, Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary was sitting in the house. Now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Amen. Jesus said, your brother will rise again. Martha said, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Yes. She said, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ the Son of God, who has come unto, into the world. Now I want you to skip down to verse 32. <clears throat> then when Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Let's go down to verse 38. Then Jesus, again groaning in himself, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time there is a stench, for he has been dead for days. Jesus said, did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? 
Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was laying. Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me, and I know that you always hear me. But because of the people who were standing by, I said this, that they may believe you sent me. Now when he had said these things, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus did. Yeah. I want to pray. Amen. Father in heaven, I thank you that we can call you Father. Yes. Yes. And you are our Father. Yes. And it was your plan and it was your will. And so you sent Jesus. And we will never know this side of heaven how precious and priceless it truly is. But here now today, we give you thanks. And Lord Jesus, we thank you that you did all that you did. Because you came, you died, and you rose. We can call God our Father. We can call each other brother and sister. And we are not just in the house of God, but we are in the family of God. Yes. And it's only because of what you did. And we honor you. Now, Holy Spirit, God here with us, the promise of the Father sent by Jesus. Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, now take your rightful place here with us. And give us eyes to see and give us ears to hear. What has been already planned by the Father and the Son for the church, for the body of Christ. Help us, Holy Spirit, to receive all of it. To the honor and glory of Jesus. Jesus, who is the Savior, yes. the healer, yes. the head of the church, yes. And our soon returning king. And everyone in agreement said, Amen, amen. and Amen. Yep. Hallelujah. So we've just read through a familiar passage to virtually everyone about the story of Martha and Mary and Lazarus. What I didn't point out to you was at the beginning of this chapter, uh, in verse number five, it says that Jesus loved Martha her sister, and Lazarus. I want to point that out because most of the time when we talk about Martha, <laughs> it's not nice. Yeah. <laughs> but it says here that Jesus loved her. So I just want to point that out because I think there was something very important about the relationship that Martha and Jesus had that it points out here that he loved her. Okay. So the other thing... The reason that I, I went back to that is that here in John chapter 11 at verse 20, Martha is the first one to come to Jesus. Maybe it's because of the relationship, I don't know. But it says that when Martha heard, she went to him. Martha heard and she went to Jesus. That's verse 20. I just want you to understand something. There's one of these little tidbits you can't miss. If you get up and you go to Jesus, you're going to get something. Yeah, there you go. A lot of people sit back, wait, wonder, wish, do nothing, stay in neutral. But Martha got up and she went to Jesus. Martha is the one that's grieving. Martha is the one that's hurt. Martha is the one that's wounded. But Martha gets up and she goes to him. I think that speaks volumes of what she thought of him. I think it speaks volumes of the relationship she had with Jesus. And then when she sees him, she declares, <clears throat> If you'd been here, oh Jesus, if you had just been here, but even now I know what you ask of God God will give you. Now she says something that's pretty spectacular. Yep. If you'd been here, but I know 
that even now, whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Now, that's not your average passive statement. Mm -mm. There's some strength. There's some, some bone to this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Even now, I know what you ask of God in heaven. God will give to you. And you're here with me. But then she does something that I think everybody in this room has done once. And I know I've done more than once. Jesus says to her, I am the resurrection and the life. And he who believes in me, though he'll die, he'll live. Whoever believes in me, will you? do you believe this? And she says, yes. And then Jesus is going to say to her, she's, she's going to make the statement to him, yes, I know you're talking about the last day, the resurrection. Now it's funny, because she starts off in one position, but by verse number 27, let me see if I can find 27. Mm -hmm. I believe you're the Christ. You've come into the world. That's No, that's the wrong number. I wrote it wrong. Verse 32. I know that he will rise again. It's verse 23. It's verse 23. Jesus said, your brother will rise again. And Martha said to him, I know he will rise again in the resurrection in the last day. She just said, whatever you ask of God, God will give you. And then she says, but I know it's going to come at the end. It's going to come on the last day. How far off in the future can you push it? Now, this is interesting. Because I'm following something about Martha here. Number one, it says, it, it, it said in an earlier verse that Jesus loved her. Okay? So now he loves her because of how much faith she has in him. Mm -hmm. He loves her because of her dedication and her commitment to him. He loves her because she's willing to stand up when others won't. <laughs> now, she says, this is probably typical Martha. I know whatever you ask God, God is going to do it. But then she says, but it's going to happen on the last day. <laughs> It's going to happen not now, not here, but it's going to happen in the resurrection. And then in verse 27, she says, Lord, I believe you are the Christ, the Son of God, who has come into the world. She resets by declaring who Jesus is. I'm going to tell you on your worst day, reset and talk about who Jesus is. All right? So now the next thing that happens in the storyline is that Martha shows up. And she has the same song to sing. If you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. If you had been here, if you had come, if you had shown up, if, if, if. If, and now Jesus is having to listen to the same repetition. <coughs> Lord, if you'd just been here, he wouldn't have died. Now, I don't know how many times you've gone to visit someone that just lost a family member, but the last thing that you want is for them to hold you responsible that they died. I don't know. This kind of looks like, smells like, feels like. Jesus, this is on you. Yeah, if you if were here, been here, if you've been here, if you'd come, <laughs> you knew. We know you knew because we made sure that you knew. We made sure that you found out. So now this is really kind of confusing because we've got people who believe in Jesus, people who love Jesus, yes. people who worship Jesus, yes. people who follow Jesus, and now they're blaming Jesus. <laughs> Come on, they're blaming yes. Jesus. Yes. One minute they're saying, yes. whatever you ask of God, he's going to do it. 
yeah, 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 it'll happen on the last day in the resurrection. Uh, um, uh, uh, but, but if you'd been here, this wouldn't have happened. <clears throat> but we know that whatever you ask of God, you'll get. <laughs> and, 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 and if you'd been here, this wouldn't have happened. Uh, but, but we know. I think sometimes we do that. Huh. I think sometimes we do that. Jesus is not going to go in a circle forever with this of we know who you are if you had been here and now we have nothing to do but to weep and cry. So Jesus finally says, roll away the stone. And here we have Martha, so full of faith. Martha who said, I know you're the son of God. Martha who said, I know you are the one God sent. You're the son that came into the world. I know, I know, I know, I know. How many people are telling you what they know about Jesus? Oh, God. Martha says, <laughs> there is a stench because he's been dead four days. It seems like to me Martha is getting in the way of the very thing she asked Jesus to do. How is it that you can say that you know God, believe in God, you know where Jesus came from, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, and then you oppose, you oppose, you oppose, you oppose the miracle God wants to put right in your lap. I've been there. I've been there. Martha now is backing up. She says, no, he stinks. It's been four days. And then verse 40, Jesus says something really profound. He turns to Martha and he says, did I not say to you, if you would believe, you would see the glory of God. He says, you're going to see the glory. He doesn't try to reason with their mind. You're going to see the dead raised. You're going to see him like nothing ever happened. No, he just, he addresses the fullness of what's about to happen. You're going to see the glory of God. They want to see their brother back. They don't want him dead. They don't want him in the tomb. Jesus goes right past all of it and just says, you will see the glory of God. Of God. Amen. Takes a little faith to believe you're going to see the glory. Now I'm just going to point one or two things out to you. You believe in God for a raise at work, you get it. Oh, wait, that's, I can see it. I can see it. I've got it. I've got it. I've got it. Well, you might be believing God for, for something like, you know, a, uh, 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 um, a restoration with a family member. You've been at odds, you had an argument, said things you shouldn't say. Oh, oh God, help me fix it, help me fix it. Boom, you get it fixed. Oh, oh, that's wonderful, that's wonderful. You know what happens to us? We want to have miracles that will fit in our pocket. Did you hear me? I said, we want miracles that will fit in our pocket. Mm -hmm. we, want, we want miracles that will fit the way we think. We want miracles that fit the way we live. Jesus didn't say to her, if you believe you're going to get a miracle, he said, if you believe you're going to see the glory of God. In other words, you're going to see something bigger than you could hope, dream. You know what, God, that's what the Father wants to do. He wants to get you to a place and your faith that Jesus died on the cross, he was taken from the cross, he was laid in a tomb, he came out brand new. Yeah. He didn't come out because they were standing around having a prayer meeting. They were all hiding somewhere. Jesus came out, forgive me, all by himself. 
Jesus is always, the Holy Spirit is always trying to get you to a place where you will actually get a glimpse of the glory and get an answer to the problem, get a miracle that you actually need. Hallelujah. Maybe it's a miracle you need for yourself. Maybe it's a miracle that you need for your family. Maybe it's a miracle that you need for your city. Maybe it's a miracle you need for your country. Amen. Come on. Jesus said, if you can just believe that I am who I am. Didn't he say I am seven different times in John? Can you just believe that Jesus is I am? Then you will see the glory of God if you'll stand. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Martha's faith was always in the future. Martha was either talking about the past or she was talking about the future, she was never in the present. Mm -hmm. People do that with their faith all the time. Oh, they yeah. got great faith in what happened way back when. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, they got great faith in what's going to happen on the other side. Hallelujah, when I get to heaven, oh, they got great faith, they got great faith. How about right here, right now, today? Yeah. Faith is not supposed to be past or future. Faith is supposed to be now, today. Yeah. And it's not some instant thing you just whip up. It's because of your relationship with God. Yeah. Sooner or later, you've got to believe Jesus died on the cross. He was taken down. He was buried. He rose. And over 500 watched him ascend into heaven. Hallelujah. Yeah. Oh, God, help us. Help us, help us, help us. Martha has the kind of faith. Nothing good can happen now. <laughs> yeah, go wait for it. <laughs> oh, oh, God. Oh. I get so many phone calls. And it's the midnight hour. Mm -hmm. And it's the last minute. And nothing, nothing good can now happen. So now they call me. And there's no faith for right now. They had faith back then. They got faith way over there. Nothing for right now. I told you I was going to talk to you about the faith of Martha, Mary, and this includes Lazarus. There's nothing any more final than burying someone. I'm not going to marginalize this at all. There's nothing any more final than realizing they've taken their last breath. There's nothing any more final than you close the casket. There's nothing any more final than burying the body. There's nothing any more final than that. So Martha and Mary are having to think about Jesus in a whole different realm, on a whole different level. They're saying one thing and thinking something else. And I think all of us do that from time to time. We say one thing about God. We say one thing about the blessing. We say one thing about the deliverance. We say one thing about the miracle. We say one thing about, and we're, we say it, but in our mind and in our heart, we're somewhere else. Jesus is superior to all of it. And thank God. Everybody say, thank God. Thank God. God. You can think one thing. Excuse me. You can say one thing. Think something else. And Jesus is still bigger than what you're doing wrong. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Martha is always, she's in the future. She's in the resurrection. She's postponing her faith. Mm, a lot of us do that. We postpone our faith. We're really hoping, we're hoping something is going to happen between now and right there. So we postpone our faith. And then when that doesn't happen and we're further into trouble, then we postpone our faith again. And when that doesn't happen, we postpone our faith again. Postponing your faith doesn't work. I'll tell you what works. 
What works is going to Jesus. Yeah. What works is believing his words. What works is believing it's never too late with Jesus. Right. Yeah. Oh, that was just so overwhelmingly affirmative. <laughs> I'm going to say it again. It's never too late with Jesus. Yes. Lazarus is proof it's never too late with Jesus. Yep. I've been to parts of the world where people do die and somebody can go raise them from the dead because they don't believe it's too late. Amen. Yeah. They want that person back so bad, they pray with everything that's in them to Jesus. They're not praying with everything that's in them for themselves or according to themselves. They're praying according to who they believe Jesus is, risen from the dead. Yes. Little sidetrack. First time we went to India, we went to a village. They'd never heard about Jesus before. All of a sudden, I'm supposed to get up and preach, and I'm thinking... What can I say to people who've never heard about Jesus? I can't talk about the 12 disciples. My mind is going 90 miles an hour. I can't talk about this. They don't know about that. They don't know what the Old Testament is. They don't know. They don't know. They don't know. I'm stumbling all around. I feel like the world's biggest idiot. And we're in this little village. Not even 100 people. But when I said, Jesus healed the sick. Jesus saves people. Jesus has the power to deliver, and I want to pray for you. And when I do, Jesus is going to heal you. They came to the front of the truck, and the men elbowed the women out of the way so they could stand in front of them. And I said, my God, what is going on here? And then I suddenly understood. They believe in the spirit realm. They believe in the spirit realm the way people in America don't believe right. in the spirit realm. I'm shocked. I'm stunned. We prayed. People are getting healed. People are getting blessed. Then they want us to come to their houses and bless things in their house. Ooh, we. I'm just telling you what. If your faith is off in the future, I don't know. How God is ever going to answer anything for you. But if you decide today is the day of your salvation, today is the day yeah. of your deliverance, today is the day of your healing, today is the day of your victory, whatever mm -hmm. area of life it might be, today is the day. Jesus is alive today. Jesus is just as alive today as he was when he stood and talked to Mary and Martha. Jesus is just as alive today as he was when he came out of the grave and the soldiers were guarding it. Yep. Jesus is just as alive today as he was when he ascended into heaven. 500 men, they don't count the women, 500 men watched him ascend into heaven. Jesus is alive. Somebody say, Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. Ooh, hallelujah. Boy. When you believe Jesus is who he said he is, then there's no telling what Jesus can do with you. Martha had faith. Then she starts shouting, no, don't open that tomb. It stinks, it stinks, it stinks. Don't do it. Martha had to reset her faith. And sometimes you and I have to do the same thing. If you reset, if you reboot a computer, if you re uh, uh, reset a device, you give it just a minute and then what? It acts like nothing is wrong with it. You give it just a moment, it's at full strength. It's working at full capacity. Sometimes you and I have to do that because of our brain. We're just so calculating what we think. We so trust what we think. We so trust what we understand. We, you know, we understand more than Jesus does. Mm -hmm. That's what happened with Martha. She understood more than Jesus. He's in the grave. If you'd have been here, that would have been great, but you weren't. He's in the grave. No, don't open it now, Jesus. He stinks. She knows more than Jesus does. Do you understand what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Reboot. Verse 39, Jesus says, If you believe, you will see the glory. What a declaration. Sometimes Jesus talks to you and he says things you're not expecting him to say. Like, 
you're going to see the glory. Well, that's not what Martha wanted to hear. She wanted to hear an angel was going to come down and there's going to be thunder and lightning and <laughs> things that they knew happened with Moses and then maybe then something would happen. They bring him out and maybe he could stand up or maybe he could sit. I don't know. What could possibly happen? Oh, God. Jesus said, you're going to see the glory. I don't hear too many Christians say, I'm going to pray so I can see the glory of God. Mm. I don't care how bad it is. I don't care they've disconnected everything. You're laying there. We're counting minutes. <laughs> I've never heard anybody say, I hope I see the glory. But you can. You can see the glory. You can see the glory because <laughs> if you believe now, whatever you ask of God, Jesus said, mm -hmm. she said, whatever you ask of God, God will give it. Hallelujah. Amen. When things are hard, we put everything off into the future. When things are difficult, we push it, we just push it off into the future. When Jesus wants you to see the glory. Everybody in this room say, see the glory. See the glory. Yes, hallelujah. Why postpone what God can do? No reason. Don't postpone it. I didn't say you have to explain what's going on. I'm sure there were some people who were asking Mary and Martha, why didn't Jesus come? Why hasn't Jesus shown up? Where is Jesus? Oh, I thought Jesus was so close to you. I thought you were so close to him. I thought y'all were close. Why isn't Jesus here? Gee, what do you think? What's going on? Mm -hmm. You know, there are times you just need to plug your ears. You can't hear anything anybody is saying. Mm -hmm. Because you're looking for the glory. Amen. You just plug up your ears. You just smile. And you just talk about how great Jesus yes. is. And you're going to see the glory. <laughs> the glory is the miracles of God on a level you cannot imagine. I'm not going to stand here and try to define the glory. You can read definitions for it. I'm just going to tell you the glory. This is Lemur. <laughs> Can't even talk. It's the power of God on a level you cannot imagine, you cannot explain, you cannot define. Jesus is talking to her about how she can see the glory. I suddenly realized after reading this, I don't know how many times now, all of this conversation that Jesus has with Mary and with Martha is so that Mary and Martha with their mouths will give Jesus, listen to me, preeminent authority. Mm -hmm. Mary, Martha, they want to talk about if you've been here. Mary, Martha, Mary, Martha. Martha said, well, you know, Lord, whatever you ask of God. Yeah, but then she changes it. Then she changes it. Oh, from there to there. From there to there. Jesus is talking to them so that they will give him preeminent authority. Do you know what preeminent means? It means nothing else comes close. Grogan definition. Nothing else comes close. Preeminent means all authority right here, right now, belongs to God. And what God wants, what God says, is going to come to pass. And nothing can stop it. The preeminent authority of Jesus Christ is unstoppable authority. And since he is maker of heaven and earth, 
He can do as he wishes. He can do as he wants. But most of all, he wants to do according to what the place that you give him in your life right now. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. I thought, why do you waste your time talking to them? Jesus, why are you wasting your time with these silly women? Why are you wasting your time with all the family that's been, 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 been talking to them for four days? I can guarantee you for four days, I can guarantee you there was nothing nice said about Jesus. Yeah. Hmm? I mean, where is he? <laughs> <laughs> that's what it was. Yeah. <laughs> so now he has to get them in a place where they're giving him authority. At first, Martha said, I know whatever you ask of God, he will give it to you. But then she postpones it. She changes it to what her mind can accept. Faith gives God preeminent authority because your mind has nothing to do with faith. Yeah. Yeah. Faith isn't based on understanding. Faith is based on belief yeah. on a bigger powerful yeah. level with a bigger more powerful God yeah. hallelujah. Yeah. hallelujah as long as you try to be God and say what can happen and can't happen Jesus has no authority yeah. you know people are doing it with the government right now are there people there I mean and I understand why because number one, I taught enough social stu studies to know exactly what's going on. Number two, I've been around enough military. Thank you very much, honey, for bringing me into the family. I've been around enough military to understand what's going on. I understand why people are saying it's too late. It can't be fixed. It, the, 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 wait a minute. My God hasn't said it's over. Yeah. Yeah. Wait a minute. God has not said it's over. Well, if God has not said it's over, then it's not over. Yeah, that's right. And I say, God, you can come and do what you want to with this country. You can come and do what you want to with the Congress. You can do what you want to with the Supreme Court. You can do what you want to with every governor in all 50 states. God, you can come and do it because I give you the right to do it. Hallelujah. Yes. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I'm thinking right now about a, one of those phone calls I got. Please come to the hospital. They've disconnected my grandmother. Uh, the family is all called together. It's down to ours. And uh, I need you to come and pray. And uh, the main reason I want you to come and pray is because she's not saved. I said, <clears throat> I don't know any of the family. Are you sure uh, that I'm not going to insult or offend anyone, a total stranger, uh, and it's not like I wear a long robe, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera? <laughs> no, please come. So uh, I agreed, <clears throat> and uh, I went, uh, and I walked in the room, and when I opened the door, the first thing I saw was grandmother. And instantly I knew, I said, this woman's never known anything but hell on earth. Wow. And I said, okay, God. <clears throat> and I shook everybody's hand real quick. There's nothing in the room. There's no equipment. There is nothing. There, there's a, not a monitor of any kind. There's nothing. There's just the bed. That's it. She's in the bed. Everybody's standing around. And so I'm walking over to her, and I'm thinking, okay. God, you're God. So I just simply said, you've never met me before. Jesus sent me here to say a prayer for you. And I knew she couldn't talk. She was too weak. She was too close to the edge. So I said, uh, <clears throat> I'm going to say the prayer. If you want my prayer to be your prayer, all you have to do is squeeze my hand, and Jesus will accept it as if you said it. Amen. So I just went ahead and I said the prayer. When I got to the end of it, I didn't plan on it, but out of my mouth it suddenly came these words, God make her last days her best days. And I thought, oh, why did I say that? Mm -hmm. So I just said, thank you, Lord. And I said, God bless you. And I thanked the family for letting me come in, and I walked out. And, of course, I had a conversation with the granddaughter. Did she, did she squeeze your hand? And I said, you know what? Uh, 
I'm pretty sure she did. Because, see, she was so weak she couldn't do anything. She's just laying there. I said, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure she did. Well, a day, not a day and a half, not quite that long, but about a day and a half went by, I get a phone call again. It's the granddaughter, and she said, just want you to know the doctor just had us all together in the room, and he said he doesn't know what's going on. Because every time they come in and check her vitals, they're better. <laughs> and she, inexplicably, over the last 24 hours, has gotten stronger. So since she's not on any medication, they're not going to do a thing. They're just going to just leave her alone and give her as much as she wants to drink and eat. I said, seriously? She said, yeah, that's what the doctor said. We're all just standing around. She said, I know, I know, I know that she, I know, I know that she squeezed you. I said, yes, she squeezed my hand, yeah. And she said the prayer, she is saved. She saved you. I want you to be at peace about that. Well, I want you to know, five days later, she was discharged from the hospital. Amen. 80-year-old woman who had never walked with the Lord, had nothing good in a history past, got saved on her deathbed, literally, lived another seven years, passed at 87, and at 87, I spoke at her funeral. Do you know she walked out of that hospital saying this simple thing? You've got to know Jesus before you die. You've got to know Jesus before you die. You've got to know Jesus before you die. She even got reconciled and led her son to the Lord before he died. Amen. I'm just telling you what. When you just let God be God, yeah. the glory yeah. will show up. Come on. Yeah. I didn't know that's what came into the room. I didn't know it. I didn't say, oh, goodness, hallelujah, the glory has come. I didn't say anything like that. I was just trying to make sure I was going to say what Jesus wanted said and yeah, then yeah, yeah. say nothing else. Yeah. And say nothing else. God Almighty. Let's come back to Martha, giving Jesus preeminent authority. When you're living a nightmare, when you have major disappointment, when there's an irreversible event, you've got to have words that give Jesus preeminent authority. Because when you do, the glory of God is going to come. Yeah. If you don't give him that kind of authority, the glory can't come, and you may never see the answer to your prayer. I'm pretty sure that Jesus was aware of the fact that he had a short window of time to do something once that stone came away from that tomb. Mm -hmm. yeah. Once the air was filled with the aroma yeah. <laughs> of Lazarus' past, Hallelujah. Giving God preeminent authority. We talk a lot. We came out of the Word of Faith movement. That was a lot about my faith, your faith, our faith. Faith, faith, faith. I'm just going to tell you what. If you don't give Jesus the preeminent position, the preeminent authority to do anything and everything he wants to do, you're going to be frustrated and disappointed and wonder why, wonder why, wonder why. And then you're going to talk about if you had been here, Lord. Right. Hallelujah. My God above. Mm. There was a conversation between Jesus, Mary, and Martha that had everything to do with Lazarus living out the rest of his life on earth. And it was all because Mary and Martha finally gave Jesus preeminent authority. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Ah, it's a mental trap we get into. Either being in the past or being in the future, but not being in the now. Jesus wants us to give him ultimate authority. How many times do we say Jesus is Lord? Saying one thing, believing something else. Saying one thing, thinking something else. I've got good news for you. When you make Jesus the ultimate authority, miracles, signs, and wonders come to you. Yes, yes. 
I said they come to you. When Jesus got the ultimate authority position that he needed from Mary and Martha, the miracle came to them. It didn't happen somewhere else in Israel. It happened right there in front of them. When you give Jesus preeminent authority, the miracle comes to you. The healing comes to you. The divine provision, the intervention, the deliverance, it comes to you. It doesn't go to the other side of town. It comes to you. Say, it comes to me. It comes to me. Say every time, every time I give Jesus authority, I give Jesus authority. It, will come to me. it will come to me. The answer to my prayer, the answer to my, prayer. my every need, my, every need. My, strength. my strength, my health, my, health. my deliverance, my deliverance. It, comes to me. it comes to me. You see, your faith actually is pretty simple. You either believe Jesus is who he said he is, or you don't. Oh. There you go. And that's all Jesus was trying to get Mary and Martha to do, mm. is just acknowledge who he is. And they said it, but then they backed off. They were open to him, but they backed off. I've missed a few miracles in my life. I have to admit it, because when I got there, I backed off. I couldn't believe it would actually happen. And I began to think, and I went back, and I went forward, and I needed just to stand still and let God be God. I have good news for you. When you make Jesus the ultimate authority, <laughs> you will see the answers to your prayer. You'll see deliverance for yourself. Mm. One of the phenomenal things about this, Jesus took the position that Martha declared, whatever you ask of God, God will give to you. Jesus took that position and brought it to a place where he didn't bless them, he blessed someone else that they had no power or control over. Now that's glory. Yeah. Now I want you to understand what I just said. Martha's position of whatever you ask, I know God will give and do it. He took that position not for Martha, but for Martha's brother. That's right. There was no control over the brother. He's dead. There was no way Martha could change anything. Sometimes when you're dealing with situations that include other people, you need to believe God in all of his glory will deal with what has to be dealt with. That's right. I don't know if I'm making this very clear. He is dead. But their position that Jesus is preeminent isn't just going to help them. It's going to bring Lazarus out of the tomb. When your position can take somebody that's dead and bring them out, that's glory. When your position is such, God, I can't fix them. God, I can't help them. God, I can't stop them. When that's your position, I can't, I can't, I can't. Mary and Martha, Lord, if you'd been here, he wouldn't be dead. Lord, if you'd been here, oh, but all of that changes when they give Jesus the preeminent authority. You are the only authority. Now a man that's dead comes out of the grave. Because when Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth, he suddenly appeared standing there at the door. Do you understand that the power of your prayer isn't always just for yourself? 
The power of your prayer can fix somebody else. The power of your prayer could fix your city, could fix your state, could fix your country. I've learned to pray first for my city, then I pray for my state, then I pray for my country. I live here. I have a right to pray for my city, my state, my country. Well, you know what? Martha and Mary had a right to pray for Lazarus. Only they had to get Jesus to do it. And Jesus was trying to get them to stop and let him take preeminence. I've got good news for you. Your God is so big that he can even bring somebody out of the dead. Your God is so big, he can answer a prayer that everybody says is impossible. God is that big. Yes, he is. I don't know. This ought to give you some faith. This ought to give you some hope. Because you know what? Mary and Martha were no different than you. That's right. They were no different. They weren't more educated. They weren't more wealthy. They weren't more influential. They didn't have people they could call on to fix this or fix that. Uh-uh. They're just like you and me. And they stumbled, and they were saying the wrong thing at the wrong time. And Jesus, oh, Jesus in his patience, Jesus in his mercy, Jesus in his goodness, kept bringing them back to one pivotal point. Are you going to let me be in charge? Okay. Yeah. Put me in charge. That's right. Put me in charge. Put me in charge. And they did. And Lazarus came out of the tomb. Thank you, Jesus. Martha declared, you're the Christ. You're the Son of God. But Martha had no idea what the glory could do. And sometimes we don't know either. Sometimes because what we know is impossible, we leave it at just that, impossible. And Jesus wants you to know that with him, all things are possible. I want everybody to bow their head for just a moment. Lord Jesus, you are the Lord of glory. And you have ultimate authority here today in my life and in the life of every person that is in this room. Holy Spirit, you are present to carry out and fulfill every promise, every hope. You were sent by Jesus. You are the same as Jesus being with us spiritually speaking. And so now we want to lean on you. We want to give you the preeminence, Holy Spirit. Because you're only going to do what the Father and the Son have ordained and approved of. I thank you, Holy Spirit. If you're sitting here today, you have any kind of a health condition, put your hand on your heart. Anything. Does it matter if the doctor told you yesterday, today is your last day? That doesn't scare me at all. Jesus has preeminent power over his body. He has preeminent power in this house. And now I'm going to say a prayer. And the Holy Spirit is going to complete the work in you and make you whole. Now in the name of Jesus Christ, I take authority over form of sickness and disease. Every form of ache or pain, mental, physical, emotional, 
even pains and discomforts that come and go. Pains and discomforts that for the moment may not be strong. Yet you encounter them and deal with them. In the name of Jesus Christ, I take authority over every form of sickness and disease. I break its power, I bind it, and I cast it out in the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, let your healing power now flow from the top of the head down through every fiber, every cell, from head, body, arms, legs, feet, toes. I say that the healing power of Jesus Christ take its rightful place. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Healing power, take your rightful place. Take, 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 take your rightful place. I thank you for healing, deliverance, freedom, wholeness, strength, strength, taking its rightful place, its rightful place in everyone that's sitting here today. I bless your holy name. Mighty, I thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. 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 <coughs> Hallelujah. I want everyone in this room. You have a situation with someone, whether it's a family member whether it's co-worker, employer. And this situation is not good. It may be downright adversarial. Everything is working against you. As a matter of fact, you may even have been betrayed. I want you to know that Jesus Christ has the power to deal with other people that hurt you. Jesus has the power to deal with other people that you love. It doesn't matter where on the spectrum this is. I want to pray for you. If that applies to anyone in this room, just put your hand on your heart. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Now, Father, I lift up those that have their hand on their heart now. Father, we lift up the one that this prayer is all about. We give this one to you. And we ask, Lord God, that you make all things new. You make all things right. And you bring all things into your will and your ways. I thank you that what has been adversarial is now broken and deliverance belongs to the child of God here today. We receive it because we give you the preeminent authority. And we bless your holy, holy name. Amen. Amen. And then there's one more prayer I want to pray. You want to make a declaration. I'm not Martha, I'm not Mary, I'm not Lazarus dead and gone. I am here, mm -hmm. and I want to walk with Jesus 
as if he has preeminent authority in my life. Because some of you, like me, may have seen your own failures and your shortcomings, and you want to rise above that. So if that's you, I'm going to ask you to say this prayer with me. Again, put your hand on your heart. Now, say this with me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I say that you're my Savior. You're my God. Healer, Deliverer, and King. I want to dedicate my faith, my words to you. I want you to have preeminent authority. I don't want to put boundaries and limits on you. I take off all the boundaries. I take off all the limits. Because I say nothing is impossible with the resurrected Lord Jesus. I'm taking a stand that my attitude is nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible with Jesus. And that is my position. And I'm going to keep it. And I'm going to use it so God can work miracles Signs and wonders in my life. Amen. And hallelujah. Somebody give the Lord some glory. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And bless him and bless him and bless him. I just want you to know that it's been, um, it's been wonderful to be here with you today. Amen. Um, and I thank you for your being open and your being willing to hear something that you've heard, that you've not heard before, Amen. to hear something that's different, yeah. but to hear something for such a time as this. Yes. Because these are not good days for anyone. I'm not blind, I'm not stupid. Right. To know Christ is to know the love of God the power of God, and the life of God. So I'm going to turn the service back over to Pastor Jim. And uh, I'm going to remain up here at the front. And uh, if there's anything you want to ask me or share with me, then I'll be over here. Thank you. Amen. That's a good word, wasn't it? Yes. And that's a now word. Now faith is. Everybody say, now my faith is. Now my, faith. my faith is now. Faith is now. Hallelujah. <laughs> And, uh, but I'll tell you what I'd like to do um, is to receive an offering, and we're going to do it all at one time, whether you have tithes and offerings for the church or a gift that you want to send to the Grogans for their trip to Malawi to send them off, which we will do. Amen? Uh, what we do here at the Master's House is a little different. We have a missionary every month that we support, and when we have a guest speaker, they happen to become the mission of that month. So, that meaning that we have started to receive anything marked missions for the month of September since the first all the way to the end. Well, we got about two more weeks, something like that. Um, anything that's marked missions that comes through online or comes through here into the box in the back, it goes automatically 100% uh, to their ministry for this month. That way it gives people time to think or, you know, it's, it's not, okay, well, I really didn't. I don't have anything today. Maybe I can have something ne next week. Great, that's fine. Take your time. Just mark it missions and send it off and bring it here, and we'll make sure that it goes directly to you. And then the church is going to add some to it. So it'll be more than what comes in. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. And so that's how we do this, and uh, we've been, you know, collecting it for it, and so now you can add to it. But if you're here today and you go, you know, gosh, I wish I could do something, we'll just do it this week. Um, I'll tell you how to uh, many ways that you can give. Also, uh, one of our missions is for food. We, we support the um, Lamb's Basket Food uh, Pantry, which is right across the tracks here. 
it has over 50 churches involved and so if you come if you bring any food every week uh, any week at any time betty takes it on over there to bless them so we can support a uh, food pantry amen? amen so um let me just say for anybody who's online uh you or if you want to we have a um uh, a, a financial system called Tithely, T-I-T-H-E dot L-Y. And if you look for that app, you can use that to give. Uh, or, or you can go to our website at tmhnow.org, go to the giving page there, and when you click on that, it uses this Tithely uh, uh, system. And on there, you can mark something for missions or tithes and offerings or whatever you want. Amen? And that makes it clear to us. So for those who are online and giving that way or on the app, all of that will go directly where you'd like it to be. Amen? And so, uh, but the app works really well. And uh, I really like that. The other thing, it has a way, uh, there's always fees involved in giving electronically. Mm -hmm. So they've set up a way to do it where um, you can give from your bank account, through your bank account, and it's almost half the fee. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you, if you mark it, you can say that I want to pay the fee myself. Then that makes the gift plus the fee uh, come to the church, uh, and your or that's your. The, excuse me. The gift plus the fee is is counted to you as total giving. Right. Yes, total giving, and then the full tithe would come to the church. Yes. That's the way that works. So they make that available if that's if you so choose to do it that way. We appreciate that. Uh, so for those online, that's how we give. You can also give uh, by um, mailing to Post Office Box One Five Six Eight in Mechanicsville, Virginia. Um, uh, 23116, the snail mail, you can do that way. Mm -hmm. Let me not forget, if you do use uh, Tithely, um, uh, what was the thing we have to make sure? Oh yeah, make sure that you put the master's house in Mechanicsville, because there's other masters in the uh, ha master's ha house, houses, <laughs> and so just use the Mechanicsville, uh, Mechanicsville one for our address. Am I forgetting anything? Usually Katie does this, but I'm just going to make sure I've said everything I need to do over that, right? For the gifts, oh, yes. And then anybody giving here today, there's envelopes in the back of the black box. You can use that, and you can give that way if you'd like to today. Let's pray over our gifts. Father, we thank you for your leading and your guidance. Uh, your word is clear, your tithes and offerings, and, but there's other things, missions and, and different ways. And um, So we thank you for leading us as, as what we should do. But also we want to thank you that you give us the opportunity to choose ourselves. Yes, thank what you. we want to give to and uh, sometimes I uh, when I ask God you know what should I give he goes well what do you want to give amen so uh, that's an opening there father we just thank you for this privilege we give by faith in Jesus name to support this ministry and also to support witness too as they're getting ready to leave in 10 days to Malawi so we sow 100% into that believing for soul, souls to be saved, salvations, deliverance, and miracles, and much fruit every single day on their trip. We, we pray uh, uh, safety, no evil shall befall you, nothing harmful will come to you, you'll not eat anything and get sick, there won't be any of that, because you're redeemed from the curse and you're covered by the blood for the whole trip in Jesus' name. No plane flights will be late. Nothing will be unsaved. Transportation will be good. The food will be good. The ministry will be fun. The people will be changed. The churches will be built. The Bible will go forth. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Reach out your hands towards them. Father, we just lay hands on you. Come on, Katie. In Jesus' name, stand up with the two of you. We're just so thankful that you're here. Reach out, let's pray in the spirit. We speak Malawi is being blessed. We see it now. We declare it now. Thank you for the fruit. Yeah. From witness to going and preaching the uncompromised word of faith, gospel of Jesus Christ. And we see great fruit and great connections and all the finances and all the supply is there to go in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. So just mark anything you want to go to them on uh, as missions. And then, um, now, usually we wait till the end of the month and put it all together, but you'll be gone. So what we'll do, what we'll do is, what day are you leaving? 27th. The 20? Okay, so I need to get you what you need by probably Monday would be good. Wouldn't it if I can get it? So we're going to, we're going to, you know, kind of look at it and get that to you that Monday. It's okay. one week. 
one week. I got one week to, yeah, one week to make sure you get it so you can have it to pay it. Right? Right? Because we're sending you. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Um, let's see. What else do I got to talk about, Katie? Uh, we, uh, we already prayed over our gift. Yes. That's good. So, so now you need to tell them how they connect. Uh, how can you connect and find out about the church? Well, we got a, several things you could do. One is go to the Master's House, tmhnow.org. Uh -huh. Go there and lots of stuff about us uh, you can find out there. We also have a second website uh, concerning what, we, what God has called us to for family. And that site is uh, the family Bible Revolution .com. Everybody say family Bible Revolution .com. Go there and on the first page there's one video called Getting Get on the Right Track. It's three minutes long. Watch that video. There's six um, snapshots. They're anywhere from three to nine minutes long, six of them, that you'll get the whole vision, the whole concept of what the Family Bible Revolution is about. I have a, a book back there, almost 400 pages, but if you don't like to read, you could just watch these videos and you can get to understand what the message is about, how to get the Word of God into your home. I mean, we got the Word in, in church, see? Mm -hmm. But we gotta take our Word home. Yeah. And that's where it's gotta be too. So it's exactly a simple uh, plan on how you can get the Word of God into your home and you can evangelize the world through your home. Oh, that's really interesting. That's a good one. I like that one I just said right there. <laughs> Amen. Um, so go to familybiblerevolution.com and get that. Also, every Tuesday night at 7. Everybody say every night. Every, every Tuesday, Tuesday night. night. Everybody, every Tuesday night. <laughs> 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. If you go to our church website or Family Bible Revolution website, go to the calendar, look at the Tuesday, click on the link, and you can join our Zoom. We have a Zoom a Family Bible Revolution Zoom that wins, lasts 40 minutes only, and we will we will mentor you and train you how to do what we're talking about at home because life isn't all about church. It's also about your home. Somebody say amen and your family. Hallelujah. Very, very important. So go there. Uh, let's see. I have something else I want to mention. Am I, did I forget something? Yes. This is what I'm about to mention? No, probably no. not. What did I forget? Um, YouTube. YouTube. You can go to YouTube to hear our messages. Uh, uh, and Facebook. And Facebook to hear our messages. YouTube is, um, you, what's our YouTube address? TMHRVA. TMHRVA. Go there and it's the uh, archives of all our messages. And we'll have this, this will be there by this evening. And then and you can Facebook. Watch it there. Facebook, it's already there. Uh, but we're going to post it again. And Facebook, our Facebook address is? At TMH Now. At TMH Now. Yeah, there. Yeah, doing really well. Yeah, I'm doing good. She yeah. usually does all this. And yeah. So, and if you want to get in touch with me uh, or us, write to Pastor Jim at tmhnow.org, and I promise we'll respond. Amen. Mm -hmm. But I do have one more thing I want to uh, show you that's kind of cool. And can we put up that slide about the Focus Revival? I got a call several weeks ago from a church, uh, the Goochland Christian Fellowship from a pastor that I've never met. I don't know anything about the church. And they asked me if I would come and minister at a tent crusade in Goochland. And I said, yeah, yeah. hallelujah. So uh, there is a focus revival, worthy of focus, that's what they're calling it. It's a tent crusade mm -hmm. in Goochland. It's gonna be on se from September 27th to October the 1st. They're gonna have music, food trucks, water baptism, gospel of Christ gonna be preached five meetings. Uh, I'm ministering on Friday night. You can see that. Um, a guy named Mickey Bell is ministering on Wednesday and Vern Miller on Thursday, uh, myself on Friday. Then they're having a concert on Saturday. Uh, and, but then J.D. Isbell is speaking to the group on Sunday morning at the church. And uh, so I got to see J.D. I went to the meeting, a meeting with the people that are speaking. And so um, <clears throat> why they called me, I have no idea. I'm not, I don't even know them. But I'm there. So I'm just saying, praise the Lord. So reach out your hands towards this. Father, we just thank you for putting this together. The Tent Crusade, right in the heart of Goochland. Uh, and so uh, we pray for souls. We pray for healings, deliverance, miracles in that tent. And that it will change uh, the, the town, the city of Goochland, and change the world. We thank you, Father, for it. Guide me 
what to minister, what to say, guide all of the others speaking exactly what you want to have happen. In Jesus' name, we call it done. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. And of course, if you'd like to go, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to probably go every night just to kind of be there and get the feel for it. Uh, so that's my plan, but uh, you, know, you know how that works sometimes. So it's going to be good. Um, am I forgetting anything at all? Let's all stand. Father, I thank you for uh, everybody who's online and everybody who's here. I thank you for uh, uh, coming and joining us. I call you blessed, happy, healed, healthy, and whole in the name of Jesus Christ. Everybody said amen. amen. Let's wave goodbye to those online. I'll wave goodbye to you all. Thank you for coming. And of course, if you'd like to speak to uh, Fran and Bill, they'll be right up here.